Hello and welcome to Highlights from Saturday, semi-final day here at Henley Royal Regatta. Another beautiful day on and off the water. 565 crews entered Henley Royal Regatta 2018 and for the select few, a chance of a piece of history on those wonderful trophies is just a weekend away. We're going to start with the Prince Albert, bit of a local derby, University of London versus Imperial. The winner of this semi will face Goldie in the final tomorrow. My tactics at University of London here is to really try and put IC Imperial College under pressure early. They need to put them under pressure. They have done that, they've just nudged yep. into the lead. So they go for past 40 there, University of London, a great job there, really putting IC under pressure. This is slightly against the uh, run of play here, isn't it? Yeah, from what we'd seen from previous results, but, you know, has IC just been sitting there in their rhythm, doing their thing, and, and now they're going to start putting the hammer down? They needed to make a move, didn't they? Yeah. And they're doing that right now, and this could be the crucial stage of the race, I think. London University fighting all the way, isn't it? They're not going to turn the result round, but they have stayed in contention all the way and played their part in what's been a good race in the Prince Albert Challenge Cup. So Imperial College London from the Buck Station. Wolf LeBrock will be first over the line, the Cox there. Over he goes now. Well done to Imperial College London who beat University of London in that local derby by a length. Now we're going to turn to Open Women's Eights. It's the Remenham. University of Washington have come a long way to be at this event and then a long way through it. They are certainly the surprise package. Today's semi-final pitted them against essentially the Great Britain Women's Eight. Oh look, they're going to be taking it out to them here. They're going to throw everything at it, this University of Washington crew. They know they're racing an international eight right here, the GB girls, but they've got great pedigree this season and I think they've actually had a fantastic start, really sticking with this GB crew. This is great racing, they've really stuck with them, Washington. They have. How long they'll be able to stick with them, we'll wait and see. There'll be a push at some point from the Great Britain boat. I think this is incredible, they're sticking with them, Washington, and I would not have expected to see this halfway at all. These GB girls have got to hold their heads and they've got to show us something through the middle of this race. Otherwise, you do not want to let this Washington crew break you. Shifting really well, the University of Washington. What can Matilda Horn in the cock seat for Leander Club and University of London do in response? This is a superb test for the GB Women's Eight. They're coming back. This is where their class is going to show now. Are they the internationals going to push back on this college crew? And I think that's going to put the nail in the coffin back towards Washington. Well, we'll see. Washington doing a very good job holding on at the moment. This race has ebbed and flowed all the way down the course and now they're in front of the regatta enclosure. This yeah. is the it's racing you want to do, not when you're sitting in the middle of the boat, obviously, but when you're, when you're, when you're watching, this is fantastic. They have just nudged ahead and there's not too many more strokes to go. In front of Stewart, it's still really tight. Washington heading towards the boom. They need to be careful of that. They're getting a little bit closer to the boom. They certainly do. If they've got a remarkable sprint in them, I doubt it uh, now. They yeah, they've gone race. now. They've gone. Yeah, they, just in the last... It was that wobble, actually, as they went towards the boom. Yeah. They were probably as distracted as I was by that. But Great Britain have taken advantage. And they're heading for the line now. Well, that has been a fantastic wow. race, hasn't it? Under real pressure there. Yeah. Under huge pressure. They're expected to come into this race and win it. And sitting a length down through the halfway marker. Well, they'll take great confidence from that. The Remenham Challenge Cup semi-final, Leander Club and University of London, the GB Women's Eight, putting together a really good race. Terrific tussle. The Princess Elizabeth for Schoolboy Eights is always one of the most exciting and popular events at Henley. St Paul's School from London have made serene progress on one side of the draw, but who's going to face them in the final? It'll either be Eton or Shrewsbury. The crew at the top of your picture, Shrewsbury, need to stay in contact. They are doing so at the moment. I think it's a pretty decent start. Yeah, no, I think this is great. Actually, I think they sort of, if anything, kind of claw back. We're pretty much level, aren't we? And this is, you know, the mind game start already here. And this is a great road for the Shrewsbury School. At the moment, it's Eaton leading, though, but it's very, very close. And we are expecting a big finish burn from the Shrewsbury 8. They will have that in their back pocket. That's part of their 
tactic against this Eaton crew, put them under pressure in the last part of the race. You can just see there's a bit of a push happening in the Eaton crew now. They just made a move, they just sharpened, they went up a pit. They want to try and get a bit more out of this part of the race because they know about Shrewsbury's kick as well. They haven't quite yet moved as they need to. The water's running out, there's about 450 metres. That's a big charge from the Shrewsbury School. They the are Eaton coming. know all about that, they know all about that. And their cox, uh, Ed Bracey, who's... Uh, whose dad coxed Cambridge and his mum coxed Oxford back in the day, he will know that uh, Shrewsbury will be charging and the time is running out for them to deliver. It's Eton College coming up to the finish in this semi-final of the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup. They will no doubt have the honour of going head-to-head -head against St Paul's, who go later in their semi-final. But uh, a great row from Shrewsbury, not quite enough at the finish. St Paul's, of course, got to race Radley and get through them in their semi-final. Saturday afternoon, three o'clock, there's only one thing that people are going to be worried about, and that, of course, is the semi-final of the Grand Challenge Cup. This was Great Britain versus Australia, and side-by-side -side racing at Henley, there's one rule. You've got to get out and get out fast and put yourself in the driving seat. It's going to be six minutes full attention, the semi-final of the Grand. Some people think it should be the final, but they've been drawn in this heat. Australia versus Britain. This is the daddy. This is the big one, the grand. First raced in 1839, and here goes two of the most powerful men's eights you'll see. At the moment, they're stroke for stroke, man for man, as they come through the start phase and push out. So here's the move. Now, Australia are making a move, Matt, and I think what's happened is they've got into a nice rhythm earlier they've probably got less weight on the, on the on the stretches on the front there you see the australian eight very high rating but very efficient their coach ian wright gets them to all row the same way they paddle with a pause at the finish and they really come in sweet to the front end and that sweetness gives that boat a real zip through to 500 meters and into 750 and i think that is carrying them slightly away from the british boat the thing is Matt, that the British eight do have a great second half. They're going to need it. The Australians will need, I think, about half or three quarters of a length on the British eight because there will be a charge coming from the likes of uh, Sachs, Tarrant, Sinclair and Sabihi in the stern of that British eight. That's a very decisive move they've made over the last minute and a half, and they really have taken a huge stretch out of the uh, out of the British eight in the middle of the course. So the Brits are going to need all their power and all the experience of those Olympic champions scattered through the boat there to respond. And they're hanging on. They're desperately hanging on to try to keep the overlap. And uh, now it's time for the Brits to really try that response through the middle of the course. And uh, will their power be enough? Well, the Brits are still managing to hang on just about to that overlap. Uh, they've responded, but it hasn't really brought them back uh, any meaningful distance. They've just stopped the Australian onslaught as they try to slide away from the bits. Now we can see the Brits trying to move again and move again from over overhead. You can see the overlap is, well, it's under threat. And can the Brits come back on turns? I think they're just moving a touch faster at the moment. The Brits are coming, but the water's running out. Man. Well, they're on the home water, many of these athletes, and the crowd's roar is right behind them. And I've seen some people do remarkable stuff in the last 500 metres here, but there's a long way to go, and the Brits will need to lift it, and the Australians have been rating above them all the way down the track. So there's probably only 15, 20 strokes to go in these two eights. The Australians have raced an absolute blinder. So we look at the Brits throwing everything in to try to get back on terms. The shout from the enclosures is enormous. People have waited to see this as the Australians come up to the finish line. You can see them there. The Australian National Training Centre row at Canberra and a brilliant win for them. They dominated in the second part of that course. The British come in over a length behind. Back to the drawing board. We won't see them to the European Games in August, but a fantastic win for the Australians. Side by side, one on one racing in between unforgiving bits of wood. Semi final day at Henley, it's a bad moment to let the nerves and the adrenaline get the better of you. Upper Yarra Rowing Club from Australia on the Buck Station. What sort of start will they have against Molsey Boat Club A on the Berkshire Station? Well, they've had a slower start. Molsey Boat Club A, the faster off the start. How quickly can Upper Yarra recover after they missed a beat right at the start? And that's a huge steer in there from the German yeah. crew. That is going to slow them down massively. They just lunged back yeah. out towards the buck station. 
Uh, unprompted, actually. The umpire hadn't got yeah. involved at that point. Attention! There have been not that many all British lineups, so nice to see in one of the new women's events here, as we've spoken about earlier this morning, the Town Challenge Cup. The naming of the women's four trophy. Oh, it's steering there, Sarah. Sorry about that, but. Wow, this crew here under Bath University. Wow. Straight into the boys. Wow. They're going to have to get straightened up here. Big overcorrection. That's a costly mistake. So the umpire's launches are all tied up and engines off, ready for one more sleep before finals day Sunday at Henry Royal Regatta 2018. You can look at our YouTube channel and look back at all the semis there on the playlist. And we'll be back tomorrow for some slices of history. See you then.